Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I transformed this whole area in my shop to be a nice workbench area. We started with just some plain oak cabinets. I did this project over the span of a few weeks, just a few hours here and there at night. So come along with me and I'll show you how we got this done. So I have the cabinets set up in the configuration that I want them to be. This empty middle section here is gonna be some sort of miter station. I haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna do that yet. Uh, it's either gonna be a platform and then the miter will stay there stationary or I'll have it kind of fold down and then maybe make some sort of countertop to go over to increase my working space there. First thing I wanna do while I can still move these cabinets around is I wanna come in here and make a window trim out of just some of the scrap OSB that I still have laying around. It'll be a little bit easier to get in there when I can move the cabinets around. So what I'm gonna do for that is gonna rip down a couple of these sheets of OSB that I have. Um, the, the gap in there is about four and three quarter inches. So I'm gonna rip these on the table saw and then I'm gonna screw them in over there. I saw this idea where you can use French cleats on the side of your workbench and then you can make some kind of whatever modular systems you want so this piece that i have here is for my table saw and this i originally saw on ben tardif's channel i will link to that video in the description below if you're interested in checking that out it's a really cool system i've built a couple other things that i can attach to this and it's really nice so for this i'll have the table saw on there and then this will be my outfeed table and so you can just take this and attach it to the french cleat system and then this bottom rail here helps it from swinging and coming undone. You could set up some sort of strapping or something like that if you wanted to, but I haven't found it necessary and it's been really strong. So I put my table saw on here and then I have the hole in the side for my shot back and I can just feed the shot back hose through there. And then I have a 90 degree elbow on the back side of the, the vacuum port there. So I have my fence set up here at four and three quarter inches and I'm gonna start ripping down this OSB. I have these pieces ripped down. Um, the box for this is four by four. So I'm gonna do the bottom and then I'm gonna do the top as 48 inches. And then the sides I'll do as 47 to account for the half inch thickness of this plywood. So I'm gonna mark those and get those cut down now. All right, I got those pieces cut. I'm gonna move the table out of the way and then move the cabinets out of the way. And then I can show you how we're gonna put this together. Tell you what, having this big old workbench on casters is super nice. The screws I'm gonna use for this are number eight, one and five eighth inch screws. It's the same screws that I've used for all the other plywood in the shop. So I'll just keep the screw head the same throughout. What I'm gonna do is start by mocking this up because I know this opening isn't completely square. And I'll try one of the side pieces. So I can already tell I'm going to have to trim these a bit. This one's pretty much flush, but I need another half an inch up there off to fit the, the top piece of plywood here. I'm gonna get these all mocked up and get them cut and screw them in. trim a tad. This is what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. Better than seeing the house wrap. I may come through and do some sort of actual window framing. Maybe out of poplar or something like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is build a frame on the ground out of pressure treated lumber. Uh, this is to prevent any of the moisture wicking up through the concrete, getting in and soaking the the cabinets. Uh, we don't really deal with that a whole lot here, but this will be nice if, if I want to pressure wash the floor or anything like that too, that makes it so it shouldn't damage the cabinets too bad. So what I'm going to do is have a piece in the back, a piece in the front, and then one horizontal on each side, and then one horizontal in the middle for, actually I'll have two horizontals in the middle on this one for the sides of the middle cabinet. 
Okay, I got these frames built, then I went ahead and installed the cabinets on the right side here. There's about an inch and a half gap here where the foundation wall is. And I just used a piece of scrap two by four to fill that gap. I didn't feel like cutting the cabinets out. So this will work. I'll just have to figure out something extra on the backsplash here so that there's not that gap. So you can see, I just have about two per countertop here. So I just did four screws per cabinet and the screw goes through the cabinet, through the scrap piece of two by four, uh, through the OSB and then into a stud. I previously marked where the studs were for this project specifically. So I knew right where to put them. We're all level here. And then I will show you how I'm gonna do this left side here. Okay, so I have the first cabinet placed here and leveled. Used a few shims on the bottom on either corner and raised the front up a bit. Side to side were level and then front to back were level as well. So what I'm going to do now is put the screws into the stud locations that I have. I've already placed the two two by fours in the back where the stud location is. So I'm gonna pop a couple of those screws in now. What I'm using are these number eight, three and one eighth inch GRK cabinet screws. So I'm gonna put the first one in so it's a little bit easier for me to stand over the cabinet and see where the stud location's at. And now I want to recheck my level to see if I need to make any more adjustments with the shim. Side to side looks good. Front to back looks pretty good. Next, I'll put these two bottom screws in now. Okay, and this did come up a little bit on the front. So I'm going to add another shim just to give it somewhere to sit on. It's still level, but it's kind of floating in the front now. I'm just going to add another shim in here, give it a little extra support. Next thing I'm going to do is bring this other cabinet in and see how it sits. Okay, and we definitely need to bring the front of this up to get it level with this other cabinet. So I used three shims on the other cabinet. I'm gonna start close to that on this one. Okay, now that I have that relatively set, I'm gonna see about getting this face frame here flush. See what kind of movement I need for that. It's actually pretty good as it is. So what I'm going to do is take a drill bit with a countersink head on it and drill into the frame, which will go into this other side. And then I'm gonna drill a hole through this to keep this face frame flush. Really the only screws I have on hand right now are deck screws for this. A little bit thinner screw would be better, but this works okay. I am going to use a clamp on this to just hold it. Give me an extra set of hands, making sure the top is flush as well. Front is flush. Okay, I can drill this out. Okay, there's the first one. Bottom is still flush. I found if you don't kind of eject the sawdust on this type of bit, it seems to really start to smoke bad. So I'm not sure why that is. If you guys know, drop a comment, I'm curious. That's all flush now. And we can look at these shims again. They're still pretty solid in here. Now let's check our level. All right, so we're nice and level going horizontal here. This cabinet vertically is also level. So I'm gonna put the two two by four scrap shims back there and then screw this into the wall. cabinets are installed. I got it all set up and ready for paint. I took a 80 grit sanding block and then finished it with a 180 grit sanding block on all of the cabinet faces and then all of the drawers and the doors. And I laid down some paper here to protect the concrete for any drip. I'm gonna do all the doors on this side. I have these little triangle things for holding stuff up. I'm gonna give those a shot. I haven't used those before. I'm gonna be using this Valspar stain blocking bonding primer. That's what I'm going to put down today. Probably saw. I already did a little test sample here. Some of the reviews on that primer said that it peels off. So I wanted to test that. So I laid down that little section a couple days ago and it's looking good. All right, I'm going to start painting this. I'm not going to mask anything off. We'll find out if I regret that. I'm just going to cut in everything with a brush and then I'll roll the faces.
so it's a couple days later and as you can see i only have this one cabinet primed i noticed as i was doing this there was some really odd behavior happening with the primer i don't know if i didn't sand well enough or if maybe there was some sort of oil on there it kind of looks like the behavior of oil being on there but i've never seen this happen before so if you guys know drop a comment i'm curious as to what the cause of this is i went and sanded the other side again i took the paint off and then sanded it with 220 with an orbital sander this time and this primer seems to be taking a lot better this time so i'm gonna do the other side and then let this sit overnight and see what it looks like in the morning i'm actually using 180 grit sandpaper i misspoke earlier and said 220 this is 180 <laughs> This paint isn't coming off as easy as the other side for some reason, so I'm gonna switch to doing 80 grit like I did for a second over there to just knock the majority of this paint off. Okay, now I'm gonna do the 220 or the 180 again. I'm just gonna hit this with a tack cloth, get all this dust off. All right, I'm going to paint this side now and then put another coat on the front and then see how it looks in the morning. One thing to note was they didn't do any of that on the solid wood, which was interesting. So I don't know if maybe it was something with the veneer or again, if maybe there was some oil on it. But yeah, we'll check back in the morning and see how it looks. So it's the next morning and this paint took pretty nicely this time. I already went through and cut this corner again. Then I cut the rest of the cabinets and same thing with the doors. So I'm going to finish getting these primed and then I'll see if I need another coat on it or not. All right, we've got everything primed with two coats here. Interestingly enough, this cabinet that I just sanded with the orbital sander like I did to fix the bubbling also had the bubbling happen. So I don't really know again what the cause of that is, but I just left it and then I put another coat over it and I can't even tell. So I'm not sure if maybe that's something with the bonding paint or what it what it is but it seems to work okay with another coat i'll let this dry for a bit and then i'll come back and put some uh, color on it okay the primer's all dry i'm starting to do a cut in on the colored paint now here's the doors over here and then started to cut in on the body so i'm gonna go ahead and get the roller out and get these things covered all right got the first coat done i was really hoping if i went a little heavy-handed that i wouldn't have to do two coats but i'm definitely gonna have to do at least one more coat I'm really liking it, how this color is coming out though. This is a Valspar color called Dusty Parakeet. It's a medium dark gray with a sort of green undertone to it. Looks really nice. I'm happy with the color for sure. All right, I got that second coat put on and things are looking really good. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And here's the cabinet bases. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put the countertop on and I have these small one inch corner brackets and I'm gonna put a couple of them in each of the base cabinets and then I will secure the countertop to those. When I brought these brackets, I didn't think about the screw length for the cabinet and the cabinet being half inch. So those are three quarter inch screws. So I just had to run to Lowe's and get some more half inch screws because I didn't have any. So now I'm gonna install the brackets with the half inch screws on the cabinet. So I came up with an idea on this. I have this little Milwaukee level with magnets on it. And I found that if you put the bracket on the magnet and then position it in a way that allows the magnet to sit on the cabinet, you can set the level on the cabinet and it will hold your bracket level with the top of the cabinet probably overkill but i'm gonna add four brackets per cabinet okay i got those brackets on i actually only did two brackets in the middle on the middle cabinet didn't think the two extras were necessary all right i'm gonna put the countertop on now So I was gonna try and match the overhang on both sides, but because I don't really know what I'm gonna do here as far as the miter station goes, I'm just gonna line this up with the edge of the face frame of the cabinet. So I have the back up against the back of the cabinet flush, and then back side of this cabinet is flush. And then this leaves, you know, I don't know, about a inch overhang on that side, which will be just fine. If you remember, because we have the foundation wall here, there's a gap. And then even the, the backsplash that you can use for this cabinet, or this countertop, excuse me, isn't big enough for that. So 
I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do there, but I'll figure something out. All right, now I'm gonna squeeze in here and put the screws up through those brackets. I'm gonna be using one inch screws. This is a one inch material and same thing with that bracket and then the head of the screw, there should be about an eighth of an inch. Uh, I'll probably just do one on the back side just to make sure that nothing pokes through. So it wouldn't be super noticeable if it did, but squeeze in there and get that going. All right, I'm gonna start on this very back corner here. Need to be mindful too, because I just did that second coat of paint earlier this afternoon. So just to be safe before I rub up on it too much. All right, we're good. It didn't come through at all. So I'm gonna zip the rest of these one inch screws in here and then start working on putting the drawers in. You may have noticed I didn't use any glue. Uh, I didn't really think it needed it. And also this laminate countertop had some questionable reviews. I'm interested to see how it holds up and in the event I need to pop it off and get something different. Not having any glue will make that a lot easier. It already chipped a little bit in the back right here. And that was just from transport. And I was trying to be really careful with it, but I checked it all before I left Lowe's and it was good, so. Uh, that was some of the review complaints where it wasn't super durable, but I really prefer the look of this over the other laminate countertop. We'll see how it holds up. I'll let you guys know a future update. This is the Urban Graphite Strata countertop from VT Industries. One thing I like to add to my cabinet doors and drawers and stuff is a little bit of this padding material. I think this is actually for like putting on the bottom of a chair, like on the on the foot to protect your flooring, but I use it for cabinets and stuff like that. And I like how it doesn't make the wood banging on wood noise. So, all right, I'm just gonna cut off, I don't know, maybe a half inch piece here. I'll just go a little bit towards the top to make sure it doesn't interfere with the drawer mechanism at all. Same thing on this side. All right, now we can put this first drawer back in. Yeah, I can even feel the paint is still a little tacky. Let's put the other, what, four drawers in on this and then see what it looks like. So that's all the drawers on. I think it's looking pretty good. Um, these are still slightly tacky. So I'm hesitant to put the doors on right now because the cabinet doors were also the last thing that I painted. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on this for the night, give the cabinets another 24 hours of dry time all right, I'm getting ready to cut this other countertop here. So I have a fence set up for a circular saw, and then this is offset an inch and a quarter because that's how much of a difference is between the blade and the fence on this. So I have a ultra fine finish blade on here. This is by Diablo. I've used this to cut laminate before in its work, so it wasn't the same laminate, but it was, it was another kind. So I'm gonna put down some masking tape here to try to prevent any tear out. All right, I've got the masking tape down and I just wanna measure one more time. This is like the fifth time I measured, but this is an expensive cut. So that actually pays off. Wish me luck. All right, sweet, that works pretty good. All right, I just have the same hardware that came off of it. And I'm just going to check if the doors are remotely close. <laughs> They're not. some micro adjustments to the drawers as well because they were a little uneven. Um, I never actually messed with the hinges on cabinets that much. I didn't realize that there was so much variability in how they can move. So that was kind of interesting to play with that. So I'm going to use these poles for the drawers and this little T-knob style thing for the cabinet doors. This is a knurled finish and then this is a smooth with knurled on the sides. I was going to do a full knurled on this because I think it looks kind of cool for a shop but then the thought of having to clean like a whole bar that's knurled sounded a bit annoying. So I saw this one and I just picked these up on Amazon. I can drop a link to them in the description if you're interested in grabbing yourself a pair. Yeah, I have this little cabinet hardware jig and did some measurements on here to verify and then set this up for 
the pull handles on the drawers and then give you this little punch. It's gonna go in this hole and this hole and I'm gonna hit it with the punch and then that should mark it and then I can drill it. So I'm gonna take an 11 inch drill bit and drill these out. All right, I'm gonna start by putting one of the bolts through and then I'm gonna get this started with a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm slowly just gonna use my impact drill to bring this in. Not too tight because these can strip out pretty easily. Just snug as plenty. You can always tighten it up later. All right, simple as that. I'm gonna knock the rest of these out. All right, all the hardware's on. I use that same jig for doing the knobs on the cabinets. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around on the back wall here and I have a couple racks for some tools and I'm gonna put those up and then figure out where I'm gonna put the chargers. Came through and finished my tool wall here. Added four chargers that I had for the Ryobi system and then uh, these two racks that I got off Amazon. I was using these in the garage before and I, they worked out just fine. I really like having it all up on the wall. It makes it really handy to grab. Uh, I'll toss a link to these racks in the description if you're interested in picking them up. I, I'd recommend them. I, I think they work just fine for what they are. So I had some old trim pieces laying around and I added those as the kick plates for these cabinets since they're a little bit higher because they're on the boxes. Came through, painted those, and when I installed them, I just put two screws at the bottom on the floor and then rested the panel on top of it so that it's off the ground about an eighth of an inch. When I bought these countertops, they only had one of these end cap kits, and I figured I could just buy another one online, but turns out they're out of stock and I can't find any anywhere. So I'm leaving those off for now in case I want to do something different in the event that those don't ever come into stock again. Maybe I'll do a little wood end piece or something like that, but I'm gonna leave it for now and see if I can keep trying to source one of those end cap kits. So overall, I'm super pleased with how this has came together. Coming from all those bare cabinets just sitting here for almost a year without anything on them and placing stuff on it, and it was just a mess. So I'm really excited to start filling all these out and getting some real organization going in the shop. So that's gonna wrap this one up. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end. I'm sure this is probably a long one, if you guys have any questions or comments, anything that you would do differently or any suggestions, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.